the path of life is rarely clear or straightforward. We find ourselves lost in the dark wood, unclear which direction to go, perhaps having strayed from the path we thought we were on. It is at these times that the gift of getting lost is that we begin to pay more attention than we usually do. Perhaps we are looking for blatant signs when the subtle nudges of spirit are already right there. Our journey invites us to get quiet and open wide our senses. There's a path, though it winds its way through darkness, we would choose. Let us continue our journey into the gifts of the dark wood. This week, our theme is the gift of getting lost. I'm Pastor Lida. I'm Kimberly Emerson, and we welcome you to Westchester United Methodist Church, a place where everyone is welcome and all are affirmed as beloved children of God. This is a place where love works. together in our opening prayer. Permeating love, enter our lives and open us to the gifts residing deep within the holy darkness of our lives. When we feel overwhelmed by the twists and turns of life, quiet us, open us, heighten our senses to perceive your nudge toward life. In your many names we pray. Amen. this confession and assurance. For plunging ahead without listening to you. Forgive and restore us, O oh God. For not recognizing your still small voice within us. Forgive and restore us, O oh God. For forgetting to ask for assurance, your greatest gift. Forgive and restore us, O oh God. Hear these words of assurance. Lost is not lost to God. You are not lost to God. God is with you, forgiving and restoring you to wholeheartedness. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Well, today we are going to continue our journey together into the dark wood. But before we begin our journey, let's pray our traveling prayer. Please repeat after me. Our eyes are ready to see your face. Our eyes are ready to see your face. Our ears are ready to hear your call. Our ears are ready to hear your call. Our feet are ready to walk your path. Our feet are ready to walk your path. Our hands are ready to share your peace. Our hands are ready to share your peace. Our hearts are ready to feel your love. Our hearts are ready to feel your love. Our minds are ready to know your grace. Our minds are ready to know your grace. 
Amen. Amen. You know what? Sometimes Puppy Pastor Molly gets lost. I get lost too, but luckily when one of us gets lost, I remember something that helps make a difference. It isn't a map, it isn't a compass, and here it is. Huh? Not huh, help. It says help. This is a very important thing to learn how to say. Sometimes people don't think that they need help, but you know what? No matter who you are, everyone needs help sometimes. Well, the other day, Puppy Pastor Molly got out of this garden and I didn't know where she was. I ran outside and I called her name and I remembered the word that makes a difference and I yelled, help. Let's all say it together, nice and loud. Here we go, help. That's great. Now let's try it again, but this time let's keep our eyes and our ears and our minds open because that helps us recognize when help is near. Okay, here we go. Help! Very good. On the day when I couldn't find Molly, I called her name, I yelled, help! And then I looked around and I stopped and I listened. I heard voices and it sounded like they were yelling, over here. I yelled, help! And I listened very carefully again. I followed the sound of the voices and guess what? Some kids in the neighborhood saw Molly running by, heard me cry help, and kept Molly safe while they used their voices to let me know where they were. I was very glad that I called for help and used my eyes and my ears to discover that help and Molly was closer than I had thought. So whenever we're feeling lost or afraid or overwhelmed, it's important to ask for help. And it's important to keep all of our senses open to the possibility that God's help is closer than we think. Molly had a grand adventure. I learned how to ask for help and I used all of my senses to discover the helpers. Amen. Hear now this first story of the ages from 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 6 through 9 from the New Revised Standard Version. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if the Lord calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Hear now this story of the ages from Psalm 42, from the New Revised Standard Version. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God?
now this contemporary word entitled Lost, written by David Wagoner, from his work Traveling Light, Collected and New Poems. Stand still. The trees ahead and the bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here, and you must treat it as a powerful stranger. Must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes. Listen, it answers. I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again. Saying here, no two trees are the same to Raven. No two branches are the same to Wren. If what a tree or a bush does is lost on you, you are surely lost. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. <laughs> Getting lost. Most of us have gotten lost at least once or twice. Some of us get lost with alarming frequency, even with Siri, GPS navigation systems, and good old fashioned maps. And sadly, I am one of those people. I can leave the house to pick up a kid a few blocks away and have it take 30 minutes because I got lost. I could even take a relatively straightforward trip to Santa Barbara and end up in Fresno. We like to travel in a straight line, and, and we don't stress out too much if we veer to the right or to the left when there are road signs guiding us. However, when there are no road markers or they don't make sense to our directionally challenged brains, we start getting nervous and we start to feel a bit lost. There are times when moving in a straight line has worked in the past, and we expect that the way forward is to continue in that known straight line. But what if God has called us to make a turn to the right or to the left? Well, then what? What happens if we ignore the call to go right or left and continue moving forward in that straight line? Would the sense of being lost be a gift in those times? In the book, The Gifts of the Dark Wood, Author Eric Elms talks about those very moments when the spirit is working behind the scenes, maybe not paging us or calling us on our phones, but, but working in signs or, or moments when things can't be explained through natural causes. He shares that the principal way God offers direction to someone in need while respecting free will and the constraints of natural law is often through gentle intuitions or nudges that arise within our consciousness, producing those moments which we can either accept or reject. He goes on to say that if the suggestions the Spirit sends us were less subtle, they would negate free will and we would become little more than robots carrying out the will of our programmer. While their subtlety often makes them difficult to discern, these moments signal the way forward when we need to make a turn or when we need help through trouble, if we are paying attention. The ancient mystics taught that sometimes when we feel lost, it's actually the first point at which we can be found. When we are in a dark wood, if we stop, if we breathe and wait, we can remember that the woods are not lost. The birds and the trees of the woods are not lost. If we stop and recognize that we are lost and look around, pay attention, the way forward will be revealed. The woods will have found us. God doesn't offer us a way to avoid the hard stuff in our lives or, or rescue us from defeat. God offers the assurance that God loves us and will be there for us just as much in defeat as in victory. I know I don't like to think about defeat very much. I don't like to think about being lost very often. However, 
Being lost can help us find the place in the dark wood when we desire God's presence in our lives more than a solution to our problems or having all of our problems magically disappear. In that moment, our worry and our fears will disappear. Quiet assurance becomes a defining moment and a miracle to stand still and simply let the unexpected find us. When our yearning souls send out a signal to God that it's searching for home and that we know God will find us. When God speaks in the movies or on television, the clouds part, a beam of light falls from the sky, and we hear God's voice clearly thundering down to us from the heavens. But our lives are not the movies, and we need to let God be God. God is not a movie character. If we don't get the signals that God sends the first few times, God will keep sending them if only we watch and listen. In our reading from 1 Samuel, Samuel is alone one night sleeping on the floor of the temple as was his duty as the assistant to the priest Eli. Suddenly, Samuel hears a voice calling to him and thinking he is hearing Eli's voice, Samuel calls out, here I am. Eli tells him that he didn't call for him, so Samuel goes back to sleep. Samuel, Samuel, he hears again. And again, he goes to Eli and Eli tells him it wasn't him and to go back and lie down again. A third time, Samuel hears his name called. Once more, he returns to Eli exclaiming, here I am for you called me. At this point, Eli has figured out what is happening and he tells Samuel, go, <clears throat> lie down. And if you are called again, you shall say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. In response, Samuel receives a message that will eventually turn him from the assistant to the priest, to one of the greatest prophets since Moses. On that restless night, Samuel found his place in the world. While this story does speak of God as calling Samuel as if there is an audible voice calling, this is scripture's way of speaking of intuition. Rarely would an ancient Hebrew equate the voice of God with an audible sound. When the spirit nudges us in its inaudible ways through hunches, intuitions, and shifts of awareness, it was frequently recounted as, and God said. How many of us miss the spirit calling us into great and wonderful work or calling us to a new direction or offering help in a time of crisis simply because we expect the signs to be more clear and for God to act with more supernatural movie effects. In Samuel's story, God didn't call to him just once. God does not give up on him even though he kept mistaking the signals. When it comes to finding our place in the world, I think mistakes don't matter nearly as much to God as they do to us. Even if it means sometimes taking a step which we think is backward, are leading us someplace we hadn't thought about before. Our paths are really straight and they are not well lit. In our times in the dark wood, listening for God's voice as if it were walking in a forest at night. Sometimes we charge forward, assuming that we know where we're going and then we smash into a tree. But even when we recognize those lightning flashes from God, only a small section of the path is revealed. We walk to where the path was revealed, and then we wait for the lightning to signal the next step forward. God's lightning and our flashlights may not show us the whole path at one time, but they will show us enough so that we can keep in Samuel's story, the person who was instrumental in Samuel's finding his path was Eli. 
who told Samuel how to listen and to respond to God. And yet, at the end of the story, Samuel has to tell Eli that Eli's ministry must come to an end because he has been unfaithful to his calling. Despite this story's sad ending, it shows us that God's faithfulness is more powerful than human unfaithfulness. We can still be the mediators of the Spirit's voice to others, even in those times when we haven't done such a great job at following it ourselves. Sometimes we can experience the Spirit's call through the most imperfect people. I experienced that when I, when I first began to notice a nudging to change my profession and head off in a direction I had never thought I would go. In an encounter with someone I was working with, a person who was making really bad choices and who was very lost in the dark wood, a lightning flash from God showed me the beginning steps of a journey I had not planned on taking. And this lost person, this person who was making a lot of mistakes and was really hard to be around, this person was the person God used to move me off the path I had set for myself and veer off into another direction entirely without the benefit of clear road signs. Even those who are lost themselves can be gift bearers to others seeking their way in the dark. In my life, I have had to learn how to be okay with being lost because frankly, I am seriously lost a lot. That story that I spoke of at the beginning of trying to drive to Santa Barbara and instead ending up in Fresno, true story. That dark night with an empty gas tank standing under the lights of a little tiny gas station in Fresno instead of in Santa Barbara, I knew I had a decision to make. I could give in to the desire to throw myself upon the ground and scream. I could fill up my gas tank without asking for help and continue to directionally flounder about or find a place to live in Fresno. Or I could take a deep breath. I could swallow my pride knock on the bulletproof glass which housed a graveyard shift gas station attendant and ask for help. When I ended up in Fresno instead of Santa Barbara in the middle of the night, I was angry and I was afraid and I didn't understand how what I just did was even possible. And frankly, from the look on the gas station attendant's face when he asked me where I was trying to get to and where I had started from, he too was amazed at what I had done. Well, I didn't hurl myself on the ground. I didn't pretend that I meant to see Santa Barbara via Fresno. I asked my new friend at the gas station for help. And he gave me help while trying to keep a straight face. And he set me on the correct path. To Santa Barbara and eventually I did end up where I needed to be with a new appreciation for the signs all around me offering directions and guidance if I am willing to pay attention. I have learned that maybe my journey might smack me into a few trees. It will undoubtedly include quite a few U-turns and it will probably take me in directions that I had never imagined and that I might occasionally miss the signs God has placed along the way. I have accepted that God will not part the heavens and shout, turn left, turn left, no, Lida, the other left, when I'm in the dark wood. I've also learned that not all who wander are lost, as said in The Hobbit, that the trees and the birds in the forest are where they are supposed to be, and that eventually, when I make space to listen to the Spirit's nudges, I will be too. In the dark wood, even those who are lost themselves can be gift bearers to others seeking their way in the dark. Each week during our worship series, we will take a moment to reflect. 
This week, you were encouraged to use a marker to write a word of encouragement on a rock for someone who may cross the path where you have been, feeling utterly lost. What would you say to them? What would God say to them? Cairns, or piles of stacked rocks, have historically been used to mark pathways. to join together in a time of prayer. There are many people who are walking in the dark wood for various reasons. You're invited to speak aloud or hold quiet in your heart the names of those who need our prayers. There are many places in this world where fear reigns. You are invited to speak aloud or hold quiet in your heart the names of those places or peoples that need our prayers. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. God and community, holy in one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Abba, Abba God, God in heaven, heaven holy, holy be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. to share your gifts and support this faith community and its work in the community, you can do it a couple of ways. You can go to our website and click on the online giving button. You can mail a check to the church. We support the LAX Food Pantry. You can drop off your food donations to the church office or donate to the food pantry online. We also support suicide prevention programs. You can visit our website Click on the donate button and give directly to suicide prevention. Come here, Bonnie. Come here. On October 17th through October 24th, come on, boys. Puppy Pastor Molly and I are captaining, or being captains of a team, to walk in the West Side Food Bank's 31st virtual walking from home to end hunger. It's virtual again this year, but for tens of thousands of more people in our community still suffering due to COVID-19, hunger has never been more real. Together, we can make a big difference for our neighbors experiencing hunger. Check out our website for more information on joining Team Westchester UMC, supporting our team, or learning more about the West Side Food Bank. Through our gifts and our presence, we welcome all to God's inclusive love. Sometimes like a campfire, sometimes in the songs, sometimes in the silence, sometimes in the run. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up our hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up our hearts to hear, sometimes like a picture, sometimes like a word, sometimes like a knowing, sometimes 
like a bird. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear sometimes from the deep blue, sometimes from the hook. Sometimes like a slow dawn, sometimes thunderstruck. God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear God's voice anywhere, God's voice everywhere. Open up hearts to hear. You have a place in this world, a place where everything comes together in your body and you disappear into a seamless whole. Let go of whatever shortcomings afflict you and inhabit this world with your fullest and truest self. May the spirit of the living God, made known to us most fully within life's dark wood, go before you to show you the way, go above you to watch over you, go behind you to push you into places you may not necessarily go yourself, go beneath you to uphold and uplift you, go beside you to be your strong and constant companion and dwell within you to remind you that you are surely not alone and that you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you, burn brightly within you, now, now and, and always. always. Amen.